This week on the show, eBay announces a pre-loved partner program, updates to their mobile app, and more. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to episode number 239 of the Galaxy CDs, Rocks, and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. My name is Ryan, and for those of you who may not be familiar, I am actually a full-time reseller and a part-time YouTuber and podcaster working out of my home here in the greater Cincinnati area, and this channel is all about the flip life. We're going to cover some reselling news. we got some big updates coming from eBay. Uh, they had their spring seller check-in last week, and we've got uh, a few interesting announcements from that. Uh, they've also made some updates to some policies and a new personnel announcement. So there's a lot going on this week over at eBay. Uh, we'll also have one quick update from Amazon and then a fairly short what sold recap at the end. It was actually a pretty busy week last week, but I didn't sell a lot of big things. So I think I've only got like maybe half a dozen items to share with you. So uh, let's just get right in to this reselling news. News updates. So as I said, eBay announced several things at their spring seller check-in. They did go back over the winter seller update as they usually do and reiterate all that stuff. We've already covered that on this show. There's an episode available for that if you want to go check that stuff out. I'm not going to rehash all of that today. We're just going to get into the stuff that uh, looked like it was new information. This first thing, uh, three years of eBay sold data in the palm of your hand. They're going to add uh, an extra year and add research capability to the mobile app. Uh, this will be really great for people who primarily sell, list, and research on mobile. I am one of those. Um, I use my mobile almost exclusively. I do very, very little on the desktop unless I need to get into Terapeak and research really unusual items and look for really old sales data. So this is gonna be good. You'll be able to do this directly from the mobile. It's gonna be available for both a uh, iOS and Android. You can search using keywords, UPCs, manufacturer part numbers, or ISBNs. As I have talked about on this show on more than one occasion, they have some issues. Their ISBN catalog is all but broken, in my opinion. The numbers, you scan a barcode and you get uh, a lot of irrelevant data. For this type of use, it may be okay because it does typically pull the right book. Uh, so you'd be able to do the research to look for pricing and that sort of thing. But I personally do not rely on eBay's catalog information because more often than not, there are too many errors in it with publication dates being wrong, uh, publishers being wrong and so on. Sometimes even wrong authors. It's just, it's a really, it's a bad catalog and they don't really allow you to update it. So I don't use it. For this use, it may work. We'll have to see when this thing rolls out. This is going to be coming out sometime in the next quarter, I believe. Uh, manufacturer's part numbers, they also have some problems with their search data with manufacturer's part numbers. We talked about that about five or six weeks ago on this show. So that one might be a little sketchy as well. But again, we'll just have to see how that works out. They say this program on the mobile will display actual sold prices. Uh, a lot of times if you do research right now on mobile, it does not show you the actual sh sold price. It'll show you the last listed price with maybe a strike through to indicate that it sold at some sort of a discount, but it doesn't show the actual price. This they say will do that and it will be importantly free for all sellers. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, sounds like sometime potentially in second quarter. Uh, they're also going to show within this program, easy to understand view of the key metrics. It'll include things like the average sold price, the sold price range, the percent that were sold with free shipping, and for those that sold with shipping, what the average shipping cost was, both a total number of items sold and total item sales, which I assume by that they mean by dollar amount, number of sellers who have sold the product. So if you've got one guy that sold a hundred of these and nobody else has sold it, you'll be aware of that. Uh, a sold price trend graph. So you can see if the sales price is increasing or decreasing, which can be useful as you're doing research, especially if you're out in the field trying to make a buying decision. And eventually it will also show eBay's calculation for the sell-through rate, though they do say that that is gonna come in a later release. So that will be useful data as well. For someone like me, as I've talked about, my catalog is a lot of long tail stuff. 
sell-through rate is not particularly important for me, but if you're selling a fairly high velocity item or you want to sell fairly high velocity items, uh, sell-through rate can be very, very important. So that will be helpful. It will also allow you to set advanced filters, a duration of preset or custom periods up to the last three years. You'll also be able to filter by category, item condition, and selling format. So this tool is gonna give you a lot of flexibility to research items on the fly directly from your mobile. So this, when this thing rolls out, assuming it works like they say it's going to work, will be a big win for sellers. They're also adding uh, to the mobile app background enhancement, studio quality background on your fingertips. Elevate item brand and image quality, save time and money for setting up a physical photo booth and show items with a contextual background. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see some examples of this in on the screen. Uh, again, this is not something that I would probably use for an old book. It's a book. There's not a lot of context there. Uh, having it on a light neutral or white background, though Google says that is not absolutely necessary anymore for their search to work properly. Uh, I still find it to be helpful, but these new backgrounds will certainly be, uh, particularly I think for people in fashion, uh, will be pretty useful. There's also going to be a huge change to mobile. This sounds like it's probably not going to be out until later this year, and it's going to be in very limited re test release sometime in the next quarter. I don't know how they're going to identify sellers who qualify to be beta testers for this thing, but they're going to uh, introduce a dedicated space for selling on mobile. Right now, if you, if you do a lot of stuff in selling on the mobile app, it is it can be a little cumbersome, and you're you want to do research and you got to get out of your listing and you kind of lose your place. And it's really, it's very difficult. They say that this new app functionality will allow you to do kind of multitasking, potentially even have multiple screens or be able to easily navigate back to where you were. So we'll see how this thing goes. Again, it's going to be out in a beta test sometime later this year. It's going to give you more robust selling tools to access on the go. Again, including that product research that we just talked about. Easier to multitask between selling tools, easier access to messages from customers. They have pretty much moved everybody over now to their new messaging system. Uh, I had initially some complaints about how that system operated. Those seem to have all been rectified. The new messaging system, I actually am pretty pleased with how it's working. If you're watching on YouTube, you can let me know in the comments what you think of that. Uh, and there will be testing coming forth on both iOS and Android. Again, probably next quarter or third quarter. So, but this is going to be a big, big update. Uh, again, for sellers who primarily list on mobile, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. If they can consolidate all of these things into one seamless application, uh, I would be a very happy camper. The last thing, and this is probably the biggest announcement they made in their spring seller check-in, a new program. This is also going to be tested as a pilot program in the U.S. only called the Pre-Loved Partner Program, Building Trust for pre-loved pieces as the pre-loved fashion landscape grows. So key thing there, obviously this is strictly at least initially going to be for fashion only. Buyers have more options than ever before. While this can be exciting, maintaining trust and curating great pieces has never been more important. This pre-loved partner program helps indicate to buyers that each listing accurately and completely reflects the product it is describing and customers get peace of mind when they have the option to return. So I assume that you're going to have to have returns enabled to participate in this program. So that would be kind of a key takeaway. Uh, again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see some examples as I go through this of what some of these screens are going to look like. This program, again, is a U.S. pilot program. It highlights, they say, the best of the best of eBay pre-loved fashion sellers to qualify for this you're going to have to meet some fairly strict requirements. You're going to have to be a top rated seller. You're going to have to have item not received feedback of less than or equal to 1%. You're going to have to have item significantly not as described feedback of less than or equal to 5%. You're going to have to have 95% or better positive feedback, and you will have to have returns enabled with a time frame of 30 days. This will probably eliminate a lot of sellers, uh, which I think is, to be fair, the goal of the program to make sure that it's only the quote unquote best of the best that actually qualify for this. If you are a fashion seller, again, feel free to let me know in the comments if this is something that you would be interested in or if you think it will be helpful 
to your sales. They highlight some of their perceived benefits for this. The pre-loved par partner program is an unparalleled opportunity to get your inventory in front of our most passionate and stylish pre-loved buyers. The program will include a special badge on your store to indicate trust, exposure on the forthcoming pre-loved partner program landing page. So there will be a separate page within eBay that you can go to to purchase from sellers who are in this program. So that is important. There will be dedicated marketing, marketing assets and events. So they're going to push this, I assume, through probably online and television advertising to try to draw traffic in. This, to me, again, you can let me know what you think. I think this is a shot across the bow of of Poshmark to really try to go after some of this fashion business. They're going to go offer discounted ads opportunities. So if you want to advertise and you're part of this program, you'll receive some sort of discount and there will be partner pre-loved partner program specific community roundtables and forums as well. Uh, this program, the pilot at least is by invitation only. They say their intention is to scale quickly, which I assume means that if the pilot program works well and there are not a lot of glitches, that they'll be rolling this out to a wider audience fairly quickly. If you're interested in participating, there is a link in the chat from this. I will include that link in the show notes and the video description below. So if you're interested in participating in the pilot program, uh, you'll be able to go and do that. So that wraps up the uh, kind of what was going on for most of what they talked about in the spring seller check-in. I did not attend that. I did watch a recap video of it uh, and cribbed all these slides <laughs> uh, from that. Uh, there, again, there was some really interesting stuff there. So let me know what you think of all of that. They've also made a couple of other announcements this week. Uh, save time by automating your offers to buyers. This was announced back on the 8th eBay store subscribers can now fully automate sending offers to buyers across the inventory you choose. Offers to buyers, they note, is a powerful tool to boost sales. However, we know that manually initiating offers can be time consuming, especially for sellers with large inventories. I do send offers multiple times a day. It's usually one of the first things I do in the morning. Once I've finished my shipments, I will send offers through the desktop app to anyone who is qualifies to receive an offer. Sometimes they're watchers. Sometimes they're what's I think called power browsers. Somebody who has looked at an item multiple times within a certain time frame. In any event, there are people who, for whatever reason, have qualified to receive an offer. In a lot of cases, as you are well aware, those are other sellers who are just watching your item to see how it goes. I've had literally just this week, two people who accepted offers that I sent out thought I was making an offer on an item that they were selling. <laughs> Uh, and then had to cancel. So be, be conscious of that as well, I guess. We've been working, they say, to simplify how you send offers, introducing bulk manual offers, which is what I use, and now automatic, and, uh, rather, automatic offers for single listings. Now you will have uh, access to fully uh, automated offers across your inventory. It's easy for me to say. With this new feature, instead of manually initiating offers, you can now select the criteria for what listings to include and set the offer terms. We'll automatically send your offer to eligible buyers who show an interest in listings that fit your criteria, including any new listings that you can create. You can set also how long you want those automatic offers to run for up to a maximum of 150 days. So this is not something that will go on in perpetuity. You're going to have to go in every five months or so and re up what you're doing if you decide to do this, but it is going to, if you like to send out a lot of offers and I'll get into in a moment here, why this may not work for everyone. Uh, but this will give you a quick and easy way to not have to go in there every morning or whatever your time's, are that you would do something like this and check those offers and then manually send them out. You can create your automatic offers by going to your buyer groups page on your seller hub marketing tab, select send automated offers, choose what inventory you want to include, set your price range and name your buyer group. You can create as many automatic offers as you want, giving you greater flexibility and control. Head over to your seller hub marketing tab and try it out. So the only, my only caution with this, and I talk about this pretty regularly on this show. I do every month, I set up various promotions with a discount for older inventory. So things that are over a year old, and those discounts may range anywhere from 20% to sometimes as much as 50 or 60% if I'm really trying to move some old dead inventory. The problem with this 
is I change that, that offer and the items that are in those offers pretty much every 30 days. And if I get a watcher or someone who qualifies to receive an offer on one of those items, I send an offer for an additional 10% off. However, if it's a regular priced item, I send an offer out for 15%. So there's no way really the way this is currently set up. I went in and played with it a little bit for me to indicate if the item is already on sale, I want to send X offer. And if the item is not, I want to send a different type of offer. And again, to go through and manually select from what amounts to nearly 11,000 listings is not really feasible. So for me, this particular program is not going to work that well. Uh, but for someone who doesn't do a lot of promotions or just wants to offer a blanket discount and they don't care whether the item is on sale or at regular price, this will be a fantastic opportunity to send out offers automatically and save yourself a little bit of time. eBay also sent out a message last week. They're bringing uh, their privacy policy in line with their AI practices. They sent out a really quick message that said they were updating their policies. This article is over on e-commerce bytes. eBay is adding a section to its privacy policy next month to bring customers up to speed on how it uses artificial intelligence. The new user privacy notice goes into effect on April 8th of this year and includes some other changes as well as some edits. We're going to cover this just fairly quickly, but section 11 of the eBay user privacy notice deals with data protection specifically quote, Important additional information about the protection of personal data in connection with the use of our services, including whether you are required to provide personal data. eBay added the following subsection, the use of artificial intelligence or AI powered tools. We may use, they say, artificial intelligence or AI powered tools and products to improve our services to offer you new or enhanced features, a customized and personalized experience I don't know how personalized it actually is, if it's an AI doing it, not a person, but that's maybe on me, uh, to provide you with enhanced customer service and to support fraud detection. This new notice takes effect ne next month, but the CEO recently said that eBay is already using AI to handle some customer service inquiries. This was an article that they had last week that I'm not gonna cover, uh, but they did say they have replaced certain customer service agents with AI, which will read your message and then write initial responses. Uh, so if you have had a recent experience with eBay customer service and thought that it was even less helpful <laughs> uh, than a previous one, uh, you can let me know down in the comments if that was your experience and what you think of this this AI stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. I suppose for some really basic issues, it would be okay, but I, I, for anything that's complicated enough that I really need to speak to someone, I'm not sure AI is gonna be up to the task just yet. But anyway, they also made some changes to section five, purposes and legal basis for data processing and categories of recipients. Uh, they say, we will process your personal data in order to fill our contract with you and to provide you with our services. And eBay added a following verbiage as well as well as for the execution of the transaction between the seller and the buyer. Section 5.4, they note, starts off with provision of functions for users that make the processing of transactions easier and more convenient. Administration of several delivery addresses is an example that they point out. They added new verbiage stating, updating stored payment information from time to time based on information provided by your bank or other payment service providers or provide users with more information about their transactions, calculating CO2 emissions from eBay and so on. eBay also changed the name of Section 6 from international data transfers to cross-border data transfers and in other areas it changed the term user ID to user name just to be consistent. Again, I will link to this in the show notes in the video description below. I encourage you to go look at the user agreement and the privacy policy if you have any questions about what may be going on there. But the, the upshot of all of it is, as with most of these companies, they're adding more AI capabilities and removing more humans from the equation, and they want you to be aware of that fact. Uh, last bit of news from eBay. They have a new uh, executive. Uh, this is from Dawn Block. She is the GM for eBay US. Uh, she says, hi, sellers, we're on a path to building a stronger eBay for the future, one that is growing and resilient in the face of any challenge. Change can be perceived in many ways, so I wanted to take a moment to inform you of another change, a change in leadership, that change being me. 
not me, but her. Uh, I am Don Block, the new general manager for the U.S. market. I'm incredibly grateful to my predecessor, Adam Ireland, for his skilled and thoughtful leadership, and I look forward to building on the momentum that his team has created. Don has been with eBay since 2021 and has been responsible for driving, quote, exceptional shopping and selling experiences across fashion, collectibles, home and garden in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. She says she's witnessed the transformation of eBay. Some of the initiatives she's been super involved in are the Vault for Trading Cards and the Authenticity Guarantee Program. Both of those are big, big focuses for eBay. So she's been kind of in the forefront of developing and implementing those things. Both of those experiences, she notes, are built around trust for both the buyer and the seller and trust for the eBay community at large. It is what she says she hopes to earn from eBay sellers as they begin this new journey together. So new executive over at eBay. Last bit of news this week, uh, Amazon had had a loan program for third party sellers, and apparently they are no longer going to underwrite loans for sellers in their $140 billion marketplace. This article is over on Yahoo Finance. More than a decade after first offering loans to merchants who sell goods through its online marketplaces, the Amazon lending division will cease underwriting its own loans to merchants, according to an email sent to some sellers that was viewed by Fortune magazine. I tried to read that article, but you have to pay to subscribe, so I found this one instead. <laughs> uh, Amazon spokesman, uh, I guess it's Dennis Sanmez, confirmed the news in an email to Fortune, quote, we regularly evaluate our programs and services and have made the decision to discontinue term loans underwritten by Amazon for Amazon sellers in the U.S. and the U.K. This change will take effect March 6th. So the email went out and bam, this thing went into effect. They were no longer doing these loans. The spokesperson said that they will still do market financing solutions offered by other quote unquote trusted third party providers with deep experience in lending and servicing financing programs. So the program itself is actually not going away, but you will not be getting the loan now from Amazon. They will be partnering with third party lenders in order to do this kind of like go into lending tree. They don't actually give you the loan. They just pair you with a bank or a lender that is the best fit for your particular situation. And that is what Amazon is intending to do. Uh, this article goes on to note that last year, Business Insider reported that some economists working at Amazon had raised concerns about the level of defaults, which is people not paying back their loans, that the program was exposing Amazon to. We've talked on this show on multiple occasions about the rising level of debt in the country and in the world, for that matter, and that what that effect could have on sellers. This is kind of on the other side of that. You've got sellers who have borrowed money from Amazon in order to grow their business, to add inventory, to do whatever, add a warehouse, whatever it was they were trying to do, and then ultimately defaulted on their loans. Amazon doesn't want to mess with that anymore, and I can't really say I blame them. Uh, they say the increased uncertainty of business repayment ability by sellers necessitates higher inspection of our on-balance sheet credit slash lending products noted the article that was viewed by Business Insider at the time. They gave no indication that they intended to do away with this program, but here we are, and it's done away with. <laughs> uh, they did note that if you had applied for and received confirmation that you would get a loan prior to March 6th, that loan would still go through, and it would still be through Amazon, but no new applications would be accepted, and any that were in process apparently at that time were going to be uh, either declined or forwarded over to these third parties. So there you go. Uh, that, my friends, is your reselling news for this week. And now let's get into this fairly brief What Sold segment. So like I said, it was a pretty busy week last week. I did, I think I did 120 new listings and sold like 93. So it was fairly active. Uh, if you're following me over on, on Instagram at Galaxy CDs Rocks, I did put up a post I sold last week. I think it was on Thursday, my 20,000th item. Uh, if you had told me that I would buy enough stuff and sell enough stuff to move 20,000 items through my basement. <laughs> uh, in the span of just over four years, I would have told you there was no way that that was going to happen. But here I am. Uh, I've sold 20,000 items. This is a relative handful of them that went out last week. This is from 
the uh, big anime and manga buy that I've talked about for about the last month. This is Fred Perry's Gold Digger, The Time Raft Part 3. This was a DVD from Antarctic Press. Again, uh, that lot I bought 79 items for $40, so just over 50 cents a piece. This sold for $24.99 plus shipping. Another sale over on eBay, a book, A History of Greece for Colleges and High Schools. This was from 1903. It was written by a guy named Philip Van Ness Myers. I've had this book for a long, long time. It was part of the big, like, 15,000 book lot that I finished, gosh, now almost a year and a half ago. So I'm into this book for about four and a half cents. I had it listed, I believe, for $49.99. It's on a discounted offer and sold for $32.49 plus Media mail shipping for sale for the week over on Etsy. I've talked about this big lot of Western books that I bought. I was at an estate sale. This goes back in the, into the fall. It was probably in September. Uh, a, a bookseller that I know had already been through this sale. So I assumed that the sale was going to be cleaned out and literally right inside the door sat a giant table full of all these books about Westerns, Western radio shows and TV and movies and serials and so on. And he had apparently just had no interest in those whatsoever or totally overlooked them. I bought, I don't know, man, 60 or 70 books off this table for two bucks a piece. And they have been absolutely fantastic. This is Randolph Scott, a film biography. It was written by Jefferson Brim Crow III. It was a first print hardcover with its dust jacket from 1994. Again, I own it for two bucks. It sold over on Etsy for $34.99. If you see these old books about Western movies, if you're inclined to look at books, they're definitely worth taking a look at. They're, that was a relative gold mine for me. Speaking of, here's another one. This one over on eBay uh, from the same lot. Trigger Remembered, a tribute to the smartest horse in the movies, w written by William Whitney. This was, I believe this was a, actually a trade paperback illustrated uh, an affectionate tribute to the smartest horse in the movies told by the screen's foremost action director. Again, a book that I owned for $2 that sold for $49.99 plus shipping. And lastly, your flip of the week. This is a fairly short one. The Country Preacher, Life and Ministry of Elder Solomon Stoner was a paperback written by a guy named Herman Schumann. I think this was published in the 1970s. This sold over on Etsy. For $59.99, this was part of a big, like, 3,000 book lot that I did back, gosh, last summer probably, that I own for about 16 cents. So, again, not a ton of stuff there, but some interesting items. Again, showing you that despite the gloom and doom about how bad the reselling market is and how terrible it is to try to sell books, <laughs> uh, there's still money to be made out there. I, like I said, had a very good week, lots of transactions. Just a lot of stuff. I generally don't share anything here that's less than 20 bucks. They're just not worth messing with. I had a lot of stuff in that 17 to $19 range. So it was a fairly productive week, uh, but just not anything super, super exciting. So with that, uh, if you got something out of this show or you just feel like uh, clicking something, uh, if you would do me a favor, if you're watching on YouTube and click that thumbs up button, it would help the channel tremendously. Uh, and I do appreciate it. If you're not currently a follower of the podcast or a subscriber to the YouTube channel, please consider joining those as well. Memberships are also available if you're interested in making any kind of financial contribution to this effort. Uh, I believe it's $4.99 a month. And you get early access to these videos and some other odds and ends. So if you'd like to support the channel in that way, that would also be appreciated. But mostly, I just appreciate that you take the time to watch and or listen to this show. And that I get so much feedback from people who get some value from it. I actually had somebody that reached out that said the other day they had actually canceled an email subscription to some site where they were getting their news because they just get it all here and that is that just means the world to me. So I'm, I'm again, hopefully you got something out of it. If you did hit that thumbs up button and until next time, it's time to sell. Thanks guys. You have been listening to the galaxy CDs rocks and flips reseller talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will catch you again next time.